Three, two, one, and hello and welcome to another episode of That Karate Podcast. We're still going. Sorry, people. Uh, introducing, as always, uh, Mark Slattery, who's today, uh, Sean McLaren, and today's special guest, we really look forward to this one, is Matt Price-Sensey. Hello. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. I'll do a quick biography. I'll do this as quick as and as efficiently as I can. As I said beforehand, Matt Sensey's done a lot of stuff, so... I'll take a deep breath. Um, Matt Price says he started karate in 1982. Too young. You look too young, Sensei. You look too young. Uh, Matt joined the infamous Leeds Shotgun Karate Club under the guidance of Bob Rhodes, Sensei, mm -hmm. at the age of 13. At 15 years old, Matt was asked to join the KUGB Junior Squad. By the age of 16, he was fighting for the Leeds Senior Committee team. Well, Matt's first international success came at the European uh, Shotgun Karate Championships in Monaco in 1992. He took bronze and was part of the winning junior team. By 1999, Matt was captaining the famous KUGB team and winning many national and international titles. In 2002, Matt became the fourth person in history of the KUGB to become the grand champion by winning both kata and kimiti at the national championships. 2006 saw Matt since taking the title of individual European champion at the Eskers in Switzerland, and uh, it was the first British competitor to do so since 1989. Well, during this time, Matt has also competed under Sensei Tiki Donovan, OBE, as part of the English All Styles team, and added a WKF international medal to his collection. In 2007, Matt uh, Sensei captained the KUGB senior men's team and uh, got gold at the, at the Whiskers well, uh, Championships in Poland. I won't say the town, I can't pronounce that. <laughs> uh, Matt Sensei retired from competition in 2007, much to everyone's relief, I think. Since then, Matt has dedicated himself to studying all aspects of Shotgun Karate. And he's also written many articles for SKM and his highly regarded instructional community DVD series. Uh, yeah, not bad for, 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 a, for a Thursday sense. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, who started the questions? Who's on the first question? Uh, I'll get kicked off, Sensei. Um, as you said, as uh, Liam did mention, a lot of people do know you. You've, you've had a lot of success in your, in your kind of uh, career in karate. So, we just kind of like to get to know you a little bit more. Um, kind of what got you started in karate and, and what kind of keeps you motivated now, keeps you going, keeps you training, keeps you teaching and stuff? Okay, uh, well, I got started in karate um, as when, uh, I was about nine, ten years old. Um, I was, uh, my main hobby at that age was watching television. Um, and I think my parents, my mum decided, especially that, watching television wasn't going to get me anywhere. Um, I wasn't particularly very good at school and I wasn't particularly very sporty either. Um, so it took me long to, to try some karate out. Uh, and as we all do at first, we thought, I thought it was fantastic. Um, and after a few weeks, I decided I hated it. I didn't want to go back. Um, and I was sort of hated it for the first few years. But my mum and my dad, especially my mum, just dragged me along, wouldn't let me, wouldn't let me stop, kept telling me I, I need to do something. And then um, I think one of the guiding things when we moved to Yorkshire, so I live in Harrogate now, went along to the local Harrogate club and completely changed my view on, on karate. Uh, karate suddenly became really popular, uh, the Karate Kid movies and the, the ninja uh, sort of a revolution, Shokushuki movies and such things came out. Um, and then I, I could sort of the age of uh, 13, I decided that karate was completely for me and switched my mind overnight and have not looked back one day since and it became my whole life. Um, and what keeps me going? I, because there's so much always to learn in karate. I mean, I always joke that if you get bored of karate, you're bored of life. I mean, there's so much to it. Uh, there's so much to work on, to evaluate, to improve on. It's an ongoing journey. So, yeah, I love it. Amazing. Fantastic. Um, Matt Sinti, I mean, you, you keep busy trying to improve uh, methods of training. I mean, you've got the, the Karate Buddy app and, and you've got the Kumite Coach. Could you just tell us a little bit about that, please? Well, the, uh, the KumiteCoach.com is a real good uh, uh, like, um, idea. A uh, good friend of mine, Ben Richardson uh, Sensei, who uh, 
He was one of my assistant uh, squad coaches now for the JKS England squad. Uh, he sort of came up with this idea um, with myself and Paul Newby Sensi, who's a uh, uh, past WKF World Cutty champion, um, just to put together a platform. Uh, just so, so working from two different angles. One, somebody who has never done any Kumite before, so to, to build them towards a level where they compete. And the other angle, those people who experience Kumite athletes, giving them more things and ideas to work from, all sort of done in a high resolution um, recordings. Um, out of that, the, uh, the uh, Krati Buddy app, which I love the Krati Buddy app. Um, the Krati Buddy app was something that I came out years ago. Um, Paul Newby uh, sort of developed it. And I had it on an iPad. It sort of stopped being developed and it, uh, you couldn't get it anymore. And I had it on an iPad and I refused to update this one iPad for years because I couldn't lose that, that app. Um, and now we've got it all redone. Uh, so it's free on the App Store and the um, on the Google Play School, and it's just dead simple. Just bleeps and instructions. You can set it up in the dojo. Um, random numbers going. So I've got hundreds of drills that I do with that. Yeah. And as an instructor, it's great because I can set it up and I can walk around correcting things while someone else is doing all the shouting and the and and the uh, instructions. And for training myself, especially in this Zoom period. <laughs> I just sat it up and just trained along on the Zoom with the class. So, yeah, yeah. all good. I, I completely agree. I mean, um, I use your, the Karate Buddy app all the time. I mean, I, I literally love it. Um, the possibilities are literally endless. And as you just said there, with Zoom, uh, with like COVID, it's quite difficult just to stand in the front of the camera, just teach for a few hours. It's quite difficult. So it is nice just to have that in the background. And like I said, the possibilities are literally endless. It's just yeah. it's a great bit of kit. Yeah, well, I, did, I did a Kumite class. Well, I've been doing a Zoom Kumite class every Friday, obviously. Uh, feels like forever now on the Zoom. <laughs> um, but I did a, a whole hour uh, a couple of weeks ago when it was just one minute bleeps with 15 seconds rest in between, and one minute bleeps for an hour with different drills for that full hour. Um, and yeah, it, it works, yeah. It definitely works, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally agree. I enjoy it. My guys don't enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> um, if there's something in my dojo that does all the shouting and counting I'm as well going home that's, that, that's all I offer that's all I can really bring to the table that's, that, that's my entire skill set but, <laughs> <laughs> but you've uh, so you've really seemed to have uh, kind of certainly on the outside it certainly seemed to have uh, embraced and thrived uh, during the kind of the COVID and you've really uh, ad uh, adapted your, your teaching to Zoom it's been quite uh, it's been for, for us on the outside watching it's been it's, it's kind of, but we've stolen things from you, if I'm honest, uh, to keep going. Right, <laughs> plagiarism there. Not the worst. Uh, yeah, I'll, take been, that. I'll take a note of that. <laughs> it's, been, uh, it's been quite inspirational to kind of watch how some people have kind of shied away from, but you've kind of, you kind of grabbed it by the throat, for want of a better term, and kind of take it forward. So did you, was that a deliberate mindset change, or did you just naturally kind of gravitate to it, or did you find um, it easy? I think, well, I think like everybody at first, um, you know, this, the COVID pandemic sort of hit us by surprise, didn't it? Really? We all saw it coming, but all thought, well, it's not going to affect us really and it's, everything's going to be okay. And then one morning you get up and you say, your dojo has to shut. Uh, and I, like everybody, I'm a full-time instructor um, you know, and love teaching karate and I love doing karate even more. I go, what, what, what are we going to do? Um, and a good friend of mine, Tim Griffiths, from Bristol, who, um, who I've known for years, he jumped on it straight away. He was, even before anybody heard of Zoom. And so I rang him up that day, said, well, what, what is this Zoom? People learning off, off you know, iPads and screens. I think it, can't, it can't possibly work, but we'll give it a shot. We'll give it a go. Um, and now it's fantastic. I mean, we, this week we're back in the dojo. But there's still people having to isolate, and there's still people that can't get to the dojo. So, you know, the, the tripod was set up in the dojo just as another another student in the dojo, yeah. <laughs> with people working around the tripod. Um, and so you still had maybe ten or so people, even then, working from home who just couldn't get there that night. So, yeah, uh, it, it's amazing. I mean, you'd said to me two years ago that uh, um, online karate sessions, I would have said no. Nah. No chance, no chance. It's a gimmick. But no, um, 
I mean, some of the, I know, especially like even in JKS, uh, we've been very lucky with some of the sessions that uh, Japan have put on for us every week. And they're ringside seats to technical things. Now, I've you know, spent as much as I, much time as I can train with the Japanese in Japan, but you'll still pick up things on that Zoom that I think, oh, I didn't know that. Why haven't I not spotted that before? So as a, as a, as a learning aid, it's fantastic. Um, I do a, um, a Wednesday morning class which I used to do when we had the full-time dojo, which due to the pandemic, well, one of the reasons due to the pandemic, we lost that. But I used to, and it was always a hard grafting session. It's lots of kumite and lots of fitness, but I've changed that now and I'm going to keep that on Zoom. Whatever happens, that's staying on Zoom. 7.30 in the morning and it's just karate conditioning. Um, and the fact I can just get out of bed and just do it is even better. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you enjoy the zoom session so, so like watching your your videos on facebook and social media it just seems like that you really enjoy teaching online i, I don't know it just seems to come across that way do, do you enjoy it um i do actually enjoy it yeah I, I, I don't enjoy it as much as teaching in the dojo and uh, again back just last week teaching to a class of adults and kids at the same time uh, yeah i think wow that was really i can see i can actually see what we need to be working on um rather than assessing after the event sort of thing but but I, I i did grow to quite enjoy some of the sessions i worked really well my wife zoe who's a high level karate we work really well together sometimes she'll be on the screen writing little notes saying people's stances and stuff and then we have a little bit of banter back and forth and i'll tell her that she's only got one job and why she's messed up again <laughs> And get her out to demonstrate on. So yeah, brave, very brave. You spent the, yeah, you spent the rest of it. I think you were tough, but we didn't think you were that tough. <laughs> Stupid, not tough. All right, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. that, that makes more sense. That that makes yeah, more. I made that mistake plenty of times. I did. Tough and stupid are two different things, and uh, can easily be easily mixed up. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I'll just get a big question for you, uh, Sensi. In terms of kind of competition career. Um, obviously Liam mentioned only a few um, you obviously started off with kind of show one uh, in the past we kind of talked about comparison with show one and then you moved into WKF as well um, how did you feel with that kind of transition from traditional show one into kind of w- WKF kind of uh, competitions well, uh, well I um, I, tra- I was training um, with w- WKF competitors um Whilst I was competing the Shogo Ippon. Okay. So, um, I, one of my best friends for a long, long time has been Paul Newby, um, who's a WKF World Lightweight Champion. So, uh, he's the, and he's the British coach now. And so, I was training with him um, two, three times a week uh, whilst I was doing the Shogo. And that's really, it was those training methods that helped me get where I was in the Shogo Ippon. Um, so, I was really. Um, well, I, I just thought it was the way forward. It was, it was the way forward. If you wanted to be, if you wanted to win things, you needed to be really looking ahead and looking at the modern drills and what's going on. And um, I said, just being tough isn't good enough because you won't. You'll get through some rounds, but you won't win. Um, you have to be fit. Again, you'll get through some rounds, but you won't win unless you're fit. Yeah. And so yeah, that, that, the the WKS style. Um, so especially you say you're going away to the like the old show whip on uh, European and World Championships. The fighters that were winning those had a WKF background as well, normally as well. Yeah. Um, that doesn't happen quite so much anymore because mm. such as like the Premier One now that you know the uh, the WKF athletes are competing at such a, a high level calendar they they haven't got time to go anywhere else. Yeah. Mm. But at that time you you saw them on the circuits and they were winning things, and so you thought, well, I want to win things, so. I'll do what they're doing. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Now, you've done well. You've done really well. <laughs> I remember seeing videos of you before, and you were the kind of first person, like the whiskers, et cetera, where I saw kind of using that kind of plyometric and explosive movement that, that, that I certainly remember seeing. And I, I, you'd see the more kind of old school kind of show by puzzle, like a trebuchet, they kind of load back and go. And you just, they seemed to be standing still when you were fighting. You were just so explosive and uh, aggressive in your movement um, and dynamic. And I think. That was that was some that was quite an eye opener for the likes of uh, people my age. I grew up with Shub Weapon. Shub Weapon was enshrined as this. This is the only pure system, and anything else is sacrilege. But you were seeing that kind of movement, and you were like, "Oh wait a minute!" 
<laughs> three minute that works uh, yeah. in that setting. So I think I think you're one of the people that kind of kind of triggered the change and the change in mind of some people in the UK as regard to that kind of training. So that was. Um, did you get any kind of friction for it, or were you quite well supported with that? Uh, no, you, you did get. I did get some friction for it. Um, you know, most people would support, but you would still get people just say, "I, I won't mention any names," but I would get people saying, "Oh, well, you, you sort, of, well, you, you joint the soft side, or you." <laughs> I, again, you think, well, you've never been hit by them. Go and get hit by them, and then come back and tell me they're soft. So I did get some friction, um, but then when you end up winning that competition, you said, "Well, well <laughs> yeah, objective achieved. It's uh, simple as that." But that, um, oh, you still see now. Uh, I mean, I'll put little clips maybe every now on social media of me doing some stuff, and a lot of it was most of it will have been like bare knuckle karate, you no know, mitts, yeah. and you still get people saying, "Oh, that's the way it was. That was fantastic." And you're going, well. There's plenty of competitions I I didn't win because I was disqualified because you cut the person the bare knuckle on bare skin. Yeah. It, you know I felt it was quite well controlled. They may not agree, <laughs> but there's a cut, a big cut, and you're out. And so um, things like pads and stuff, I, I I I'll still sometimes spar without them. But for, but for a competition. You know, if you've got if you've got a job and you've got to turn up there the next day and you don't want your eye split in two, yeah, it's all it's all progression, it's all good. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah, I think it had to modernise, in my opinion. I think it I think some people a lot of people that hark back to the old days weren't actually there. They were they, yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's yeah. a lot of people yeah, talking about but... Liam, you've you've hit a nail on the head, you've you've hit the nail on the head. I hate, I see a lot of people uh, saying these uh, these things. And I think I don't remember seeing you fight. <laughs> <laughs> your face, your face isn't squashed like mine. What's going on? <laughs> um, Matthias, I mean, uh, you've got like a, a, a amazing um, achievements that you uh, that you've achieved, got over your karate career so far. I mean, looking back, what was your your like best uh, memory, best achievement that you, in your in your opinion? That, that sticks out. Yeah, that's a that's a I guess a really good question here. Um, I think every time I get asked that question, so something new pops into your head. Um, so uh, it's it's different things at different times. So um, well, when they ran out the uh, the achievements there, when I won at the KGB Grand Championships in two thousand and two. So when you're winning the Qatar and the Kumite the same day, and I I'd, I'd spent years winning. Sometimes I'd win the Qatar. And then sometimes I'd win the Kumite. And I got to that stage thinking, can I ever put these two things together? And then I did it. And so, oh, and then what, what was the next thing? Uh, European Championship. Oh, okay. Well, and so you're sort of ticking the boxes as you go. Um, when I fought for the, um, I, the um, WKF team and I fought for the uh, Royal Styles team, uh, that was to me. That was like another box because the opportunity suddenly arose, which wasn't there. The Krater United for a brief period of time. Um, the opportunity was there. I was, you know, I was already in my my mid thirties. I thought, right, can I do it? Can I get on that team? Is that another box I can tick? Um, so it's all, it's, it's all been. So when I stopped doing that competition. I can say I tried everything. I put my heart and soul into everything, um, and this is what I achieved. And even if I didn't, you know, if I didn't uh, get all my goals, at least I tried my best to get them. Um, so yeah, so I, I, maybe 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 the U, the ESCO European Championships because that's a hard competition to win. I mean, it was a um, there was no weight division, so it was just uh, everybody from every every country trying to win that one. Um, this, it was a high standard competition, and I, I got so close so many times, and, and then I just kept going until I won it. <laughs> they probably got sick of the rest. Probably got sick of seeing me there. So, but you, you, <laughs> something I don't think you'll see again is that kind of uh, certainly the WKF framework is that you don't see people kata and committee anymore. Yeah, yeah. So that, that is something that's I think again. Okay. 
It's all an old fart now. I think that is something that's maybe going to be lost over time. I think maybe you you were going to be one of the last few people that was able to kind of combine that because it is so specialised now. Yeah, it, it, it is specialised now. I mean, I mean, I've, in my view, because everyone should do both up to a certain stage and then you, then I have nothing against people specialising. Um, I, I prefer if they did, still did the other side of it, but I can understand these days having to specialise to get to the levels you need to, to, to win. Um, and then, you know, karate, is only, karate competition is only for a small period of your karate life. And after that, you know, you can go back and just do everything. Yeah, that's a, that's a very fair point. Hey, you, you've you been to Japan, yeah. And I, I remember, you have to be, we're all ex uh, Yahara students, the three of us. Oh, and I remember reading, uh, I guess I, I triggered somebody's Amazon. <laughs> uh, did, you, did you not go and train at his dojo at one point? I'm sure I read one article that you trained at his dojo. Yes, 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 trained. Uh, um, uh, I can't remember when that would have been now. Um, Maybe 2012, but yes, we, we went over there and uh, um, it was a small group we managed to get permission to go and train. So yeah, trained at his dojo with him, and uh, yeah, great experience, great experience. Yeah, yeah. Did you did you enjoy his, tra- his training? Did you enjoy his uh, his approach? Uh, yeah, I did. Um, especially, uh, you know, I'd grown up with the stories of uh, uh, Yahara Sensei. Um, Reading fighting arts, I'm sure, as, as, uh, as well, uh, my generation, I don't all, all know uh, this legendary character. Um, and so, yeah, when the chances were there to go and train with him. Uh, yeah, I loved it. I mean, I think I, t- I, think I told a story about. Um, so, we had permission to go and train in the dojo. Um, and we first got there, um, I think Osaka Sensei had just finished his training and he sort of read the letter that we had and said, okay. Come back so and so hours, so we did. And one of the junior, junior students took a uh, a really good, very basic class. And then we had a message saying, um, "You have a sense will uh, will teach you on Saturday. But you must come at this time." Uh, so we all we all turned up, and uh, he, he walked in, and we had to keep absolute discipline. Um, you had to wherever he moved, you had to make sure you were facing him in the dojo and staying in your. Uh, Sort of yoy position the whole time, and then when he came out, he um, food interpreter. He sort of asked us what our view of karate was, and you're, you're giving them sort of generic replies, or you know, it's a way of life, and uh, all these these sort of things. And uh, your heart sensor was getting visibly more cross. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, a couple of people that we had with us were, were also you know very. Uh, I said, nothing wrong with this, but more hobby karate people just going there for a little bit of a trip. And, uh, um, so he was getting crosser and crosser. And by the end of it, he said, you know, unless you give me the correct answer, um, you must all now leave this dojo and never come back. I will not teach you. <laughs> uh, so I'm starting to sweat a bit now as well. I'm one of the people you know, leading this, this little trip. And uh, um, I, I just, just, you know, you, I just send your mind back to all the articles you've ever read and every, all the interviews. Uh, I just said, oh, oh it's uh, karate is the art of killing people. <laughs> and he was, us, 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 yes. <laughs> and then told the story about them ripping the still beating heart out of someone. And he, he sort of looked around at the oh, oh, more casual karate kid who looked like, oh my God, what has he taken us to here? <laughs> I think myself and there was a Nick Hill sensor, we were running it. And, uh, and so we both had a little nod at each other. And uh, <laughs> then, then, then he gave us super class. So, yeah, <laughs> you used to come out with stories. We did a couple of courses, and there's kids in the class, they'd start telling stories, and you're like you're covering the kids' ears, <laughs> <laughs> looking at the parents sitting watching the class, like, what? Yeah, he's, he's a character. But what can it what? So now we're, we're all in the JKS boat. What, what drew you to, uh, and I kept the last few weeks we've been flying the flag. Uh, mm-hmm. what, what's gonna what drew you to JKS and Kagawa Sheehan and just and, and, and this and this group? Because we're from uh, trainers that came in as well, um, and and you're the same. So what what how did your journey bring you to uh, to Kagami Shihan and JKS? I mean, this, I mean, the simple answer is, and it always sounds a, a little bit a bit it's a bit flag waving, but the quality of the karate, um, I was I was just blown away by the quality of the karate. Uh, that's one of the trips that we had. He could have been on that same trip where we trained we trained at the JKS and. Uh, 
Um, I mean, the very, very first session we trained at the JPS was on the Kaniyama Sensei. And we didn't really know who Kaniyama Sensei was then. So so we had to <laughs> yeah, know <yeah>, now. <laughs> <laughs> and when we walked out of that session, oh my God, what is going on? It was a, a 2,000 mile an hour press up, sit ups, and that, you know, it, within the hour, we, it felt like we'd done more karate in that one hour than we had done in months. Um, and, and then we, we went back a few more times and we saw another instructor, maybe Yanaguchi Sensei or Nagaki Sensei, the quality of a karate they were producing and explaining as well. Yeah, little things, you know, asking you, why are you doing this this way? Maybe you should think about doing it this way because of this, um, which we were always told, oh, a Japanese instructor wouldn't do that. I would just tell you to work. But within you know an hour again training at the, the headquarters, there came out with so many ideas and uh, um, new directions. Um, and then I was thinking of moving across. Uh, so um, Nick Hill, Sensei, who um, who I run my leads dojo with, he was he was really pushing me. So we've got to move, we've got to move, we've got to move. Um, and then we got invited to do a demonstration demonstration at the JKS World Championships in Scotland. Um, we did that and then just watching the Japanese team just completely said right that's where we've got to go that's, that's the karate that we need um, and the best move I've ever made the, the karate is the best karate I've ever seen so. I, I, I think we're all in the same boat with that one I think that's as I say it's not no disrespect to the other organisations we've been with um, I just think that it was when I mean, Sean and I had kind of uh, had made a, were making the move already, and we went to uh, the championships. That was it was in Scotland again. I think the host yeah, of the world. I think. Yeah. yeah, and we sat. Uh, it was great actually, being like competition, not having to get either punched in the face, coach or referee, because usually oh, you sit oh, down, oh, you're grabbed, oh. given two flags, and put in a corner. So we were. I was actually sitting up, eating a hot dog, drinking. I just love you. That's that's fantastic. Great. And as you say, we watched watched the, the the quality, the karate, and we were like, "Yeah, this is, yeah, we made the right call here." So I, we, we, I think we're kind of on the same page there. Yeah. It was a hypnotized Mark. <laughs> it, was, it was a big wrench to leave uh, the KUGB, um, and I've got nothing but good things to say about the karate. But I mean, it, it, it yeah, it's good karate. The KUGB. If, if someone comes from a KUGB club, you know, the karate is going to be good. The karate is going to be good. It, it just felt that like this is the direction I need to go. It, it, it was just another level, really. Uh, but but it's, still, I'd never say anything against the KUGB's karate. We, uh, we often have people coming to the dojo as visitors, and the, the KUGB, you know they're going to be good. I mean, and many other associations like that as well, you know they're going to be good. And we're the same. We didn't leave for, for there was no animosity when we left. No. There was, and I had nothing but the greatest respect for the previous organisation. Me personally, my karate was just going a different direction that from... From theirs, I mean, I just wanted to take it a different way, and rather than staying in a a, a square a square pre- peg, I, I I kind of made the decision to kind of to kind of move elsewhere. But it's not wasn't anything. No, no was I no think it was, attack there. I think we kind of spoke about for our students as well about opportunity. We spoke to Alan Campbell Centre last week in terms of the JKS and the opportunities that it kind of. Um, I don't kind of obviously want to batter on from last week, but for our students, we felt competitions wise, training wise. That JKS was, was a better move, you know. Yeah, but I, think- I mean, you've got to get them on that WKS circuit. I mean, there's some good there's some good circuits out there, but the WKS circuit is is the premier circuit. Uh, you watch those. I mean, again, watching them doesn't always give it. You have to watch my clubs. Go and see it, see it live, and see the things that people are able to do these days. And go, come on, go, wow. <laughs> yeah. The standard is through the roof now. I mean, I, I think. I, the, 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 you look back at old videos from the eighties, you know, and, and you look at the stand up now. There's techniques people throw now, and the timing they've got now just it's so yeah. far ahead now. You think about something a technique such as like a, a timing urn or she, now there was people that would maybe do that every now and then in the eighties, but they did it. You talk about it for weeks. You would uh, it'd be the highlight of the competition. Yeah. These days, you, you you need your ten year olds to be able to do that. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, Matt Sensei, I mean, um, we're, we're back now um, to our face-to-face sessions. I know you're saying that you're, I think you was back training this week. Yes. Um, I mean, what's next for you now? Well, you know, back. 
Well, uh, it, it's a little, obviously it's a little bit of a, re a rebuilding period now. Um, uh, I think everyone's been saying the same thing. There's been a lot of inquiries with uh, the. Uh, it's amazing the amount of beginners we've, we've picked up the last few weeks. I think yeah. uh, speaking to other instructors, that seems to be the same across the board, which is lovely. Uh, um, and then it's, you know, I, I, you know, normally I'd be doing seminars every weekend. Well, I've done seminars in ages. I think I did. I did two in the small little break that we had. <laughs> um, but even like uh, this week, teaching in front of a, again, a live audience, if you will, it, it was all a bit, you had to rethink how to do it all. It will come back. I mean, it come, in fact, it will come back really quick. Uh, but I got home and thought, well, I didn't, I didn't do this, or I didn't check, uh, I, I didn't go down the junior end and correct anything. Because, uh, so it's just rebuilding that. Um, and then this is getting the squads back running, competitions. Um, some people won't, you know, won't have done anything for a year, so it's just slowly building them back in. Other people have been you know, doing the techniques on the Zoom, but haven't been hit in a year, so <laughs> getting people used to being hit again. Yeah, so you can sort that out for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we said, didn't we, with that, we felt nervous um, shortly when we went back. It was a bit, it was a bit like, a bit like ooh, it's completely out of our comfort zone, really, with it all, but um, it's, it's good to be back, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's felt very claustrophobic. I mean, I've done horrific things in my dojo with bodies. Sean and I were talking about a course I ran a while ago with, uh, was it Matsui Sensei that came over? Yeah. And there was a slight overbooking issue. <laughs> and my dojo's, the, 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 the mat's a decent size, but not for 60 people. <laughs> and, and the idea of having 60 people in there now would absolutely freak me out. I had 20 yeah. training the other night in one class and I felt claustrophobic. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun with um I think it was my uh, my senior class on Tuesday night and we've got a, we uh, we've hired a really big hall so we can keep all everything correct and and I was saying uh, I was saying Zoe, oh, it was packed, God, it was absolutely packed. <laughs> How many people in that class at 30? Oh, I felt like there's hundreds in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that I remember Matt Sui sent his face when he he came out after the, the, to, to be announced, and it was just like sixty five people stand, and he's like, "Oh, I'll have to change what I'm teaching." <laughs> it was it was quite good. It's okay. Kagawa Sensei has taught me how to teach a class like that's not run by idiots. That's what it's. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was funny. It was funny. Uh, it wasn't as stressful as the Nagaki Sensei day when I broke the line speed record and blew up my Jaguar to get him to get him to the. He was late to the uh, the airport. I think it was coming down. I don't know if it was with you. I don't know if it was maybe with you, Sensei. It was down in England. And I had to pick him up the train, uh, from the airport. And he was at 10 a.m. He was meant to be at uh, Stewarton for, was it 12, Sean? Uh, yeah, I think it was for 12, but the flight was delayed. And uh, you were in Edinburgh and it was like starting. <laughs> You're like, Sean, Sean, take the warm up. I'll be there. I'll be there the way. <laughs> and again, the class was like this. I turned up and you were panic stricken, but uh, yes, it says that it's changed days now. But I, hopefully, we can get. So, you, are you going to start doing courses again? Are you starting to get uh, bookings in? Yeah, book, the bookings are well. Uh, yeah, the book has <laughs> come back in again now. Um, uh, yeah, it's the kind of starting to, to 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 take shape again, which is nice. Um, I, I enjoy doing the courses. Like, it's nice to meet people. It's nice to meet different karate people. So. I always enjoy that uh, that aspect of it. Um, so yeah, it's it, it's going in the right direction now. So fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> How have your squad guys coped? How have your yeah. kind of competition guys coped? With yeah, that's yeah, that's that, that's we got some that have really embraced it. Or um, there's some some of our competitors who have just been on every Zoom session and have been training with all the different instructors over the around the world. And, and there's others who just um, who just haven't? I mean, some people just haven't gone on the Zoom, have they? Some people just can't connect, yeah. um, and so it's it's going to be about just trying to get everyone back together and uh, getting the old band back together, sort of thing, and, and seeing uh, and going from there. Um, certainly, I've been teaching after the juniors, uh, the kids in the dojo, uh, and some of the ones that were that were decent competitors. We can still see they've still got it, and that it will soon come back. Um, maybe the ones that are on the border of just starting to get the hang of it, there'll be more work involved there. You can see they've fallen back. But it's, 
you know, it gives us something to do, something to work on. Just, uh, we, were, we were kind of talking ourselves at the start of the week there. Is there anything from the Zoom that you would take into your live classes, some things that you might be picked up, either watching yourself, training on the camera, or some classes that you had to adapt for Zoom that you would take into your kind of live classes? Yeah, I think a lot of the, um, obviously for the Zoom classes, we're, we're, we all had to think about a small area, making your craft, your craft sessions work for maybe a three metre by three metre area. Um, and so everything worked around that sort of, uh, that sort of distance. So sort of little movement drills, um, uh, uh, footwork drills. And again, some of those things will just, they'll just slip straight back and now we go into the dojo. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think that for a majority of instructors who have worked through and, uh, you know, thrived to a degree through this period now, it will only add, I think, to their ability to become better instructors as we go back into the dojo. Um, I, I just, I think it was, what, a couple of, couple of months ago you did a course, um, I think it was for Team Sensei, uh, Bristol Karate, uh, with Steve, Steve Carlos Sensei. Yes. yes. Um, and after, it was, it was an amazing course. Um, afterwards, there was like a Q&A and um, I think someone said to you, you know, about Zoom and, and your answer to the question was, uh, was that, over this period, um, with the lockdown and, and, and the Zoom sessions, you, you've sort of had more time to reflect on your own karate, and it's given you more time to, to, to look at areas and improve and and and, and um, you know benefit. I mean, would you would you say that was the case? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, you know, so this last how long year or so, fourteen months, you know, there's been plenty of negatives. But one of the massive positives is the, the amount I've been able to, you know, really reconnect with all my karate. Um, as I say, whether it's been recording a Zoom session and watching it back, and you know, you're not looking for the good bits, you're looking for the bad bits, the things that you can make a little note on your whiteboard. Um, and then you think, well, if I'm not doing that very well, there's probably a good chance that people I'm teaching aren't doing that very well either. So that will become the focus of the next few classes. Um, I've spent, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting in my dojo at home now because it's the quietest place in the house. <laughs> um, but I've spent more time down here in the last, uh, in the last, in the last year than I have done in, in a long, long time. Um, Is that your choice or the missus? <laughs> uh, well, she, I think she's locked the door, so it must be her choice. Is that, is that, that's <laughs> getting outside, it's her choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of the... the as long as like the Zoom, like you're doing a private lesson on Zoom, they're challenging because you've really, you've got to be really thinking then. Yeah. Um, uh, and though I, I, when I first started doing like the Zoom private classes, you're like, like you'd, you'd be tempted to fill all the dead air with drills. And so some poor lad is just <laughs> 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 pretending his camera's failed halfway through because he's... <laughs> the camera does this. It just goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes on. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah, we all learn from the, these uh, these sort of things as, as we're going on. But yeah, my my own karate, I feel, um, I feel has well, I'd be surprised if it hasn't improved because it's all I've done. Um, yeah, all I've done for the last year is is just karate upon karate upon karate. And I, I mentioned earlier that the Zoom private lessons from that we've been lucky enough to get through JKS from Tokyo every week. Have really been a lifeline uh, for me. So. Yeah, me too. I got, I got to agree with that. I mean, I, I, I sometimes I, I went through. Um, I'll take the focus off you here. But I kind of went through a situation where when I, when I'm not training, I kind of lose my way. Yeah. If I'm only teaching, if I don't take that time to actually train, and though the, the, the stuff, the, the support we got from Tokyo, kind of kept me honest, kind of kept me training, um, and that kind of kept. And, and as you say, there's so much to pick up and so much to learn. And when you're able to watch it in that fine detail uh, on your yeah. daily. Yeah, it, it works. So I mean, you, you have got a front row seat, haven't you? You've got Literally. a front row seat. And um, uh, there was one the other day when we did General Showdown, when one of the, the uh, JKS cutters as such, or Asahi Sensei cutters as such. Um, and there's little things. I've got my little whiteboard out. So every time I hear something, I go, oh. And it's just full of little notes from that. Which then that'll keep me happy for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get when I talk to geeks. Do you know that? I love it. it, 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 it. 
<laughs> oh, that, you don't, that, crappy, that session started on Saturday. I had a busy day because I was teaching just after it on an out, outdoor session, which I'm, I'm still keeping going for the time being. And I had plenty of other things to do. And there's a little bit of thinking, oh, oh, I could just do about this session this morning. But within 10 minutes, bam, you're in it and absorb. Um, nothing, everything else in life fades away. And that's what's one of the beauties of karate in this period. Do you, do you think that, I mean, I know the JPS have done the online, these online courses with the, uh, with the Japanese, but do you think um, that will continue? Do you think that will, that will continue to, uh, carrying on? Do you think that it will, it will just eventually fade away? There won't be no more online classes? Um, I don't know, because I haven't been involved in the, um, the administration of doing them and setting them up at all. I would hope there'll be, I'd love to think there'll be some sort of, uh, if it continues, I mean, you want, ideally, you want the mix of both, don't you? You want them, yeah. you want them coming over so you can see it in person. Um, and then these little technical catch-ups that you can get on Zoom. Those two things put together would be would work perfectly, in my view. Yeah, definitely. I agree, I agree. I think with the being online as well, to train with, you know, I've not, I've not had the chance, unfortunately, to go to Japan yet for the international seminar. But when you log on to one of these classes, there's 400 people from all over the world training together and i think that's something that's a bit special as well you know yeah that that is really nice isn't it you, when you I, I mean, one of the things that works so well again i mean you know there's 400 people training but you always think they're watching you <laughs> so uh, <laughs> can yama does this yeah <laughs> keep in my stance it works perfectly can you see me <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's nah, good. That good. I, I was telling the story all week. You told the international seminar. I think you were you were next to me, Sensei, with K Kagabashi Hanson, and uh, Kagabashi Adam Chinti Kagabashi Sensei was teaching, and then we were sent for a water break, and we all turned back, and Kaniyama Sensei standing there with a big handful of resistance bands. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and the whole room went, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, Kaniyama uh, Sensei. Yeah, Kenny Yama Sensei is one of my inspirations. Uh, machine. Uh, uh, yeah, he, he is a machine, and his karate is. You, sometimes you forget how good his karate actually is as well. Because you, you hear him being described as the machine, and he just, you know, press up, sit ups forever. But then when you watch the karate with it, uh, and you think this is all, everything that he's doing is just developing this high level movement and action. Uh, yeah, I find him absolutely inspiring. Absolutely inspiring. Um, I did. He do, I was. Um, obviously, we just had the JKS International uh, seminar. He, he did, and I did you know, like, like an idiot. I did all the sessions, including getting up at two a.m. and three a.m. to do them. And he did one. I think it was like a two a.m. session on a Sunday night. And he did one like it was one of his dojo sessions. Uh, it was. I, I'd forgotten how hard they were. It was fantastic. <laughs> I, the first time I trained with him in Japan, it was. It was at the dojo, the old dojo before they moved across, and uh, you know, Paul and Sarah sense. And yes. I literally arrived at Narita Airport at like four in the morning and I'd gone into there's a wee hotel at the side which has iron doors in the rooms, which is a bit disturbing. <laughs> uh, and I and my guys, my students went arriving to the afternoon. They went and Paul phoned me and went, Are you, are you coming to training? Went, what? And it was that summer when it was like 42 degrees. <laughs> was jet lagged to hell, got on the Narita Express, straight in. Stole all my luggage. I know how much the Japanese love you in the Yamanote line. You've got all your luggage. Yeah. <laughs> God, nah. Then the Sagamo got off. Paul says, like, come on, come on, come on. So I'm like, a wee geisha running behind him with all my luggage. Jet lagged. A wee ginger Scottish guy in 42 degree heat. So I was I was quite the picture. And I walked in the canny. I said he just looked at me like I'd landed from Mars. <laughs> Who, who's this? <laughs> And he destroyed me. He just ran, he just walked around me laughing for the yeah. entire time because no, I had no strength. It was like I had no power at all. So just trying to do setup. So that was the first yeah. real music. I mean, I'm a yeah, if you're doing those those, I mean, every, every time you go over, or you go over, and that you have that chance of doing that session, that first session when you just arrived, and it, I, I always think, why am I doing this session? Because you. <laughs> <laughs> your brain's not functioning you're in jet lag and you uh, oh, you know, but uh, I, even though I, think, oh, I went by myself um, uh, a couple of years ago to, do, to, to train for a bit 
And I got there and I said to myself, I am not doing this first session. I'm going to go to the hotel and relax. Get to the hotel, all you do, get straight on the train, go and do the first session. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> well, the last day of that trip, I went, I, 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 my, the, Paul said to the rest of the I left it the, the previous day and I was still there a day and I went, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that last 10 a.m. class and I'm going to the airport. And I walked in, there was two of us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get off the plane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, land, I think it was Paris I landed in. I went from my, 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 my mother flight and I was like, oh, oh, give me a minute. No, you you, you can all go. <laughs> you can all go. <laughs> no, it's fine, no rush. I'll get my luggage in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me a tea. he felt sorry for me but are you leaving and I, yes he went, threw me a t-shirt <laughs> thank you as I fell out the door but I can't wait for, go, for, for going back to Japan I'm hoping we can get back in for a start next year I don't think we'll get the international seminar this year do you Sensi? I yeah I think it's I, I think it, it seems unlikely doesn't it I mean I, I, there's a bit of me it's just holding out hope uh, that we that we that we have a, have a chance, but I, I know that uh, uh, I know the moment they're struggling about out there. Yeah, haven't got many cases, but they're not they're not they're not really on the vaccines like we are. So it's uh, so uh, I don't know. I'd love to I'd I'd love to get there as soon as I can. And I was due to go out there just when it all hit. I had a door booked up to go out there. I was going to just go out there for a few weeks for my own training, and then uh, um, and then it all hit. So I still got some money. I still got some credit with KLM. So <laughs> I'm already as soon as. Yeah. <laughs> um, Matt, since, I mean, we spoke about the Karate Daddy app a little bit earlier on, uh, but we didn't speak about the Kumite Coach. Um, so people like literally listening and and uh, and watching us now. I mean, what what is what is it? Like what 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 is the Kumite Coach? I mean, we'll put the link up so that they're able to find out. But yeah, it's it's it's, it's um, it, it, it's coaching tools to give people uh, the coaching that they need. Um, so whether you're a complete beginner and you've not really done any kumite, or maybe you go to a dojo which doesn't really specialise in any kumite and you want to get ahead, um, and it's just giving you those tools and ideas and training methods, um, building up from the beginnings, what techniques you use, how they, uh, how they should be thrown for a competition, um, and then working for you with your higher level athletes, you know, other drills that you can add in, so you've got footwork drills, ladder drills, um, combinations you need to put together, correct blocking methods. Um, but, but what makes this a little bit different is, is the quality that's being done in uh, Things of uh, a day's filming, you know, we spend a, a whole day filming with a high level, you know, uh, cameramen doing it all. And you'll only get through a very small amount because everything has to be precise. Uh, everything has to be done in such a way that it's a, you know, it, I guess it's like the Netflix of, uh, of a kumite type uh, type thing. Um, and so, yeah, it's 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 just giving people that opportunity, uh, um, an online thing they can buy on. So we obviously we came up with this idea a long time before uh, uh, <laughs> this uh, this current situation hit us. Uh, <laughs> And, and in fact, it's done nothing but hinder us because people haven't been competing and we haven't been able to get together and do as many as we wanted. But no, it's, it's I said it's the, uh, the brainchild of Ben Richardson and it's, it's great. It's a real good tool. That's what struck me of it with it was that, as you say, that's a quality of it because there's lots of kind of, there's versions of it. But I've got to say that the, the yours is the, the highest standard, highest quality. And atten- what you're saying about attention to details, bang on, it's the, 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 what these kind of uh, things you say, well, this is how it's done. And we move on. Whereas, yeah, <laughs> really, I'm not very bright. I need the ABCs. I need the maths of it. So, yeah, yeah that, that's something I thought was really helpful. And it helped me teach uh, my students as well, my kind of committee guys, to give them. And it helped my understanding of it. So Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. That's, that's I'm not just great. selling that because uh, I know you like it uh, or met you. So it genuinely is a, a good bit of kit. And, and I think it's something that will um, will last. And you yeah, can I mean... It. It, it is the degree that, that I mean, and I have to give the credit to Ben for doing uh, kind of all the ideas. But he's just, you know, it, they want it done in a certain way. It's like we've got to, you know, why this technique? Why you need to work with this technique? How are you going to do this technique? What mistakes? And so, yeah, again, it's really good for us because we're going to rethink everything. Um, we can't just say, well, throw a front hand. 
<laughs> we've got to, you know, we've got to analyze and show and write everything down, make sure that we've got it across the correct way, constantly having to do retakes because you've messed up a word. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's taught, it's, uh, I enjoyed obviously the variation I kind of um, the character they used for it as well. There's quite a mix of people demonstrating, and it was good to see different people be able to do different techniques as well. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's done something like on myself and for we. You know, we we'll do a little bit of demonstrating ourselves, but yeah. really we're 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 coaching someone, so we're showing um, the coach's point of view or something, rather than saying, "Well, here's me throwing my." Spinning, jumping, back kick. Here's, um, <laughs> we'll say, well, here's uh, uh, Joe Callaway doing it, and this is what we're looking for from him, and this is what he's looking for. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a good idea, and it's working. No, uh, yeah, I, I hope you get up take on it. We all jumped on it almost immediately. Excellent. Well done. It's a, yeah, a wise, a wise. To be honest, we ran it. We, we were we, we were we were teaching the same thing every class, and we went, "You're not very good at this." And then we we, we copied you because you are quite good at it. So it was again patriotism. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously you don't uh does so your jks england committee coach um yeah. so you, you produce a very high standard and again it's uh we, we've we've seen them in action and uh sean's been beaten up by a few of them i'm sure i've, I've oh. felt them in action <laughs> it's a great thing of you um so what's next for J for, for the squad what's is it a full rebuild job have you got those athletes there are you keeping them ticking I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's something I've been given, as you imagine, I'm, and I'm sure uh, the same thing happened with JKS Scotland as well, with your, uh, your group. We have something given a lot of thought to trying to figure out where you, we, you know, what's going to happen next. Um, I've got, we're going to do a, um, I've got penciled in, uh, we're going to do a, like a squad session in September. So that gives people plenty of time to get back to the dojo first, um, get themselves going, and then, then rebuild from there, especially towards next year. Um, I know. I'm, I can't see there being any uh, big tournaments this year. There'll be lots of little ones, which is great. And just let people get back into it. Uh, you, you don't. Have, some people need forcing a little bit, but you don't want to push people in too early when they haven't had a chance. So it's all. It's it's just tricky at the moment. It is tricky. Yeah. I'm trying to do the right thing for everybody, which is always hard. But now it's, it, at the moment, it's, it's even harder. But, I think as long as they can see that we're going to be there for them and we're going to do our best, um, and if they haven't been, you know, if they haven't really had a chance for last year to do much training at all, well, you know, we'll bear with them. We'll get them, you know, our jobs to get them back into shape, back ready to get out there on the mats. You know, we, we always love the, the Scotland England match at the end of the championships up in yeah. Scotland. That's always the highlight of the day. Though. Yeah, it was always always good. I mean, the, the, I mean, obviously, Jackie Scotland got a real great bunch as well. So it's a uh, it's always good fun. It's always good fun. Yeah, it's always good stuff. Not fun referee, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's only when you get... Well, I up. flagged. I flagged for England. And I, I, I thought I was going to get lynched in my own country. <laughs> I flagged for one of you guys. <laughs> And I could feel I could feel the icy blast from the, the stands. And I went, no, nope, that's what I saw. I don't care. Right, start the car. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good fun. I'm looking forward to getting back to just generally competing again in that kind of competition day. You know, you always be dreaded it before and you go and you know that you're there from the first moment to the last moment, whether it's coaching or like my daughter's always one of the first ones up and I'm always one of the last ones up. So we're there the whole day coaching and you, you dread it. Oh, another one coming up and a long day for the, wife and the younger one, but I'm really looking forward to getting back into it now, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I think everyone's, just, everyone's the same, which is that yeah, it's just that, oh, I just want things to get back to that some level where we can just get out there and the, you know the last thing you want is suddenly like oh we're going to, this competition's arranged for so so and then it has to get put off and oh. but yeah hopefully hopefully you know, things I mean things I do feel optimistic at the moment so I'm running with that. Yeah. Well, we were saying the other week there that all the things we're doing now are plans for the future, whereas before it was about consolidation and keeping things ticking and keeping the families together, keeping the clubs together. But now it is about, we are, every plan I'm making now for regarding my dojo is all about the future, which is, is positive, it's, it's taxing, it's difficult, you're, you're trying to build, uh, you're trying to uh, look into the future a bit, but yeah, it's all positive now, so that's something we should all take. Yeah, I mean, well, you, you, 
you've had the same thing. You've had lots of uh, like new recruits and such things in the last uh, last few well, weeks. Yeah. Why people come to me, but yeah, I've, I've had I've had lots of new members the last couple of weeks. The other clubs must be shut, but yeah, there's. <laughs> Unless everybody in their granny wants to do karate, I think. I think. I think. We, I. I. I was quite negative before when I spoke to the lads. I was like, I don't. I thought opening at this time would be because normally I don't know what it's like for you guys, but usually my best recruitment time, if I can use that term, is September, October, November, December. It's not traditionally May. You know, June, July. That's usually where the outdoor sports going to get uh, attract people. But no, if it's I've, uh, we've been we've got, we've got a wee private message group but we insult each other but we've been kind of uh, got like new people in today I can't believe it you know we've been kind of sharing that so it is all positive you know yeah we, I we haven't even really advertised as such because you know I was like well let's just get the first few weeks underway for us and see where we stand and where and then the, just the emails keep coming in and like, wow this is oh, why can it always be like this <laughs> <laughs> it's not <laughs> it's not yeah, no, we have, we, I'm doing more admin at the moment than I am teaching. I, I, this isn't one part, this isn't what I didn't think the job was, to be fair. I thought it was teaching, but now I'm doing all this admin. Yeah. The teaching is the easy bit. Teaching is the easy bit. Yeah, teaching is the easy bit. It's the rest of the nonsense I find depressing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is, good. it is good. Well, Matt Sensi, thank you so much for giving up your time today. It's been absolutely brilliant to chat to you. We hope that you'll come back on at some point. And we haven't oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Off. Uh, I, I, Hopefully you made some sense through that. that us, again, we're, we're not professionals at doing this. We're just <laughs> the idiots that like talking to other karate geeks. So yeah. uh, thank you very much for giving up <laughs> your time. Yeah, um, my so we'll, we'll call it there, folks. Again, thank you very much for, for listening. I hope you enjoyed listening to Matt Sensi. We certainly enjoyed chatting to him. Um, a goodbye from uh, from Mark. You need to speak, big man. We're on, we're on Podbean as well, big man. You had to speak. It's pretty civil of him to this today. Yeah, it's quite behaved. I'm, I'm behaving, I'm behaving. All right, you spoke there, fantastic. Oh. God in heaven. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much, Sean. No, no, thanks, guys. Thank you, Sensei Matt. It's awesome uh, to kind of catch up with yourself and, and kind of hear a bit about your background and your thoughts. So thank you. So, well, thank you very much for having me. Been, uh, yeah, well, I'll get you up for a course. I know you're up for courses. Right, fantastic. <laughs> thanks very much. <laughs> can, I can steal your ideas. Face to face, you see. It's even better. Brilliant. <laughs> right, so, so thanks everyone. Remember to like and subscribe and share, and uh, we'll he, uh, we'll talk to you on the next one. Okay. Thanks very much. Finishing three, two, one.